All right, so we're at nine o'clock, and so I want to go ahead and get started with this uh, because I do limit these to 30 minutes, and I want to make sure that I respect everybody's time, and uh, I've got a lot of, I want to go through, and so I want to make sure that I get to this. So welcome to the Business Owner's Guide to Understanding Financial Statements, uh, and, and taking a look at your financial statements to discover what to look for to make some critical business decisions. We're also going to go through a couple other things of you know how to look at your financial statements to see if there are errors or problems uh, or places that you should be looking to fix problems before they become bigger and bigger problems. All right, so let's get started with this. A little bit about who we are, the Holquist firm. My name is Matt Holquist. Uh, we are known as the accountants with personality, uh, and I think that's because we really get to know our clients and we really uh, try to explain things in plain English so that they understand what's going on and so that uh, we can help them. We are a full service CPA firm in Greenville, South Carolina. We have clients across the US literally from Hawaii to Maine and everywhere in between. Uh, so we do work with a wide variety of businesses and individuals. Our true passion and what we're dedicated to is, is really educating clients, uh, we like to solve problems, and, and we just like to help people. So we work with a lot of business owners, and our primary focus is to help them su succeed with proactive tax and business planning. So you can see there the services, we've got a number of services that we work with businesses and individuals on, and our website down there. Feel free to visit us and check us out a little bit on the site. All right, so before we get into financial statements, the way I'm gonna lay this out is um, I'm gonna go through a couple of basic concepts to understand. I'm gonna make it as simple as possible. And then I'm gonna go through some examples of some financial statements to show you how to look at those financial statements uh, in your business. Then we're gonna look at them from the standpoint of how to spot those errors and problem areas, and then show you a little bit on how to use them to plan for your business. Okay, so first of all, let's go through some basic concepts to understand. And when we say financial statements in a business, okay, that means a profit and loss and a balance sheet. There are some other terms for these two that I'll go through that you may hear that can be pretty confusing. But in general, when somebody says, hey, I want to see your financial statements, whether it's a bank or you know, it could be an investor, it doesn't matter who it is. Uh, they're typically talking about a profit and loss and a balance sheet, okay? So that's really what we're gonna focus on here today. I also wanna go through the basic accounting process. I think a lot of people get really confused about just what is accounting, what does it mean, all that kind of stuff. And just to give you a visual of, of what we're really trying to accomplish in accounting. Go over a little bit on historical cost. I think it's important to understand that concept as well as cash versus accrual, which gives a lot of people a lot of issues. All right, so let's talk first about the basic accounting process. So in accounting and in a business, I mean, you see here on the left-hand side, we've got all these transactions, all right? You know, there can be thousands and thousands of these transactions. All accounting is, is putting all that into a filter to generate your financial statements, okay? Your balance sheet income statement, and we've got a cash flow statement, tax return, and of course, there's a number of other statements. But basically, all this is is boiling down all this information, summarizing it, and putting it into a format that's much easier to read than a box of receipts, okay? You know, I, I've seen plenty of business owners over the years that come in with that box of receipts, and they have literally no idea how their business is doing because they have no accounting they have no accounting process all right and there's plenty of software programs a lot of people probably most people on this call use quickbooks and that is a way to take all those source transactions put them into this filter categorize them and then you spit out your financial statements okay all right so the next thing is historical cost this also also trips people up historical cost what this means is that Everything on these financial statements, uh, particularly the balance sheet, is based on what's called historical cost. This just means that whatever you buy something for, whatever you pay for it, whatever its original cost is, that's what's going to be on there. It's not going to be a current market value. So in this example, if you buy land for $100,000, 
and in 10 years it's worth $10 million or even $100 million, it's still gonna show on your financial statements as $100,000 because it is based on historical cost. All right. So some people get a little bit confused and a little bit misled sometimes when they might have some assets or something they own in their business that has appreciated a lot. Well, it's still going to show up at what they originally paid for it. Okay. Cash versus accrual basis. This is a big one that trips people up. All right. So well, I want to talk through this, this example here in a second, but basically cash basis financial statements. These are two different ways to look at your profit and loss and balance sheet. And if you're familiar with QuickBooks and you use QuickBooks, when you pull up a report, which would be a profit and loss or a balance sheet, you can choose. You can say, I want to see this on a cash basis or I want to see this on an accrual basis. All right, so a cash basis simply reports money in and money out. If you collect money from customers, that's considered sales or revenue. And if you pay your expenses, those are considered expenses. Simply money in, money out. Now, accrual basis, that means that you report amounts that you invoice as sales, and you report bills that you receive that you even haven't paid yet. Those are considered expenses. So I wanna show you how misleading this can be in this example and why this trips people up quite a bit. So let's say you, as, uh, let's assume that you invoice $20,000 to a customer, but you haven't collected it yet. You just sent them an invoice, you did the work, you sent them an invoice, and they haven't paid it yet. And you also received a bill for $10,000, and you paid that bill already. Okay, so this $10,000 bill related to the $20,000 of work, and you paid that bill. Okay, so under an accrual profit and loss, you're gonna show sales of $20,000 because you build a customer for the $20,000. Expenses are gonna be $10,000 because you received a bill for $10,000. So your profit on an accrual basis profit and loss is gonna be $10,000. On a cash basis, your sales are gonna be zero because you haven't collected anything yet. Remember, it's money in. You haven't collected the $20,000, so you show no sales. And your expenses are going to be $10,000 because you paid that $10,000 expense. So you're going to show a loss on a cash basis profit and loss statement of $10,000. Okay, these are drastically different results. And, and if you pull up a profit and loss in QuickBooks and you compare a cash versus accrual, it's very simple to do in QuickBooks uh, or most accounting softwares you're gonna see very different results, all right? So the question then becomes, which one is better? You know, which one is really my true business results? Well, for the most part, a cruel basis is gonna be the better option. And the reason is because it shows and it reports the activity for that time period, whereas cash just shows money in and money out. So you could bill a customer that $20,000 and not receive it for six months, and it's not gonna show his income until that when you collect it. So accrual is just gonna be a better measure of your business, okay? So I always encourage business owners, look at your financial statements and keep them on an accrual basis, and it's gonna just give you a more accurate representation of your business activity. Okay, so let's get into a basic profit and loss statement. You might hear this called many things. Uh, some people call it a P&L or an income statement. It's all the same thing, a profit and loss statement, a P&L, an income statement, it's all the same thing. And the profit and loss, it simply shows you how much money you made or lost over a certain amount of time, okay? That could be a month, a quarter, a year, it doesn't matter. Any certain amount of time, you either made or lost money, and that's all that the profit and loss statement shows you. All right, so over here in this graphic, we start with sales, okay? That's what you sell to your customers, this is revenue, uh, you know, income, sales, whatever you want to call it. This is money that you've earned from customers. What you're going to do is subtract from that your cost of goods sold. Let me go to the next slide too because I've got the definitions on here. Cost of goods sold is the cost of what you sell. Okay, so for example, if you buy something for $4 and you sell it for 10, 
your sales are 10 and your cost of goods sold is four because the cost of what you sold is $4. The difference between the two is called gross profit. Okay, so $6 in that simple example is your gross profit. And then you have, after that, your overhead expenses, which are all the costs to run your business that are not cost of goods sold. For example, rent, uh, utilities, all of those additional costs that you have just to run your business. And then when you subtract that, you get your net profit or loss, and that's your gross profit less your overhead. Okay, so this simple equation is going to be the same in every single business. It doesn't matter what profit and loss you look at for any business, it's going to be the same. There are a couple nuances depending on the type of business, like a service business, but for the most part, this is the exact same formula for every single one. All right, so if we look at a profit and loss statement, and these are QuickBooks. These are from QuickBooks. And, and I pulled these up because I want to show you, because a lot of people use QuickBooks, how to really look at this uh, in your QuickBooks file. Okay, so on the left, we have a profit and loss statement that we pull up in QuickBooks, and it's for January through December 2020. Okay, so that is a one year time period. And you're going to see this is just way to me. And, and I'm an accountant, you know, so as a business owner who doesn't look at these all the time or potentially does, but is not that familiar with them, this is confusing. Okay, you've got all these accounts here, you know, you've got all these different numbers, you've got totals, reimbursement income, all this different stuff, and it's just way too long. Okay, I couldn't even fit it on the page here, it's too long. So this can be very, very confusing. So what I recommend to business owners is there's a button in QuickBooks and you wanna collapse your report. And this is what it looks like collapsed. And all that means is that it's putting all these, what are called sub accounts up under the main account. So construction income. The total of 168 is the total of 168. This way you can look at it on one page and get a nice overview of what's going on. And you'll recognize if I go back to that graphic here, that it follows this basic formula. Again, every business is gonna follow this. You've got income, which is the sales in that graphic, 169,000. You've got cost of goods sold, 71,000. And the difference between the two is the gross profit. Then you have your overhead expenses. And the total of those, they have a little bit of other income, which is interest income. And after everything is said and done, we have our net income, which is our net profit, all right, which is 25542 So again, it's going to follow the same basic formula. So what I always recommend is a look at, when you look at your financial statements, collapse them so that you can see what's going on. All right, so let's look at the balance sheet. The, health, the balance sheet shows you the health of your business at any point in time. And it's represented by this formula. Your assets, and I'm gonna go through these, minus liabilities equals your equity. Okay, so your assets are what you own, your liabilities are what you owe, and your equity is what you own free and clear. So think about it like a house. If you own a house that's worth $300,000, that's your asset, $300,000. If you have a mortgage of 200,000, that's your liability. The difference between the two is your equity. All right, same thing in a business. If your assets are a certain amount, you subtract your liabilities and that's your equity. And it's that same formula on every single balance sheet. If we look at the balance sheet here, again, we wanna collapse it. This is from QuickBooks. This is way too hard to read, too much information. You can always dig in and find these numbers. But when you collapse it over here, you get a much better view. You see you've got your assets and the total is 536,407. You've got your liabilities, which is what you owe, credit cards, your bills you owe to vendors. You have some long-term liabilities, which are usually mortgages. So total liabilities, 435, and the difference between the two is equity, 101. Now, people ask me all the time, um, I have negative equity in my business. Is that a bad thing? Yes, it's a bad thing. Think about your house. Same kind of thing. If your house is worth $200,000 and your mortgage is $300,000, you have negative equity of $100,000. You are underwater. Same thing in a business. You would be underwater in your business. So a positive equity is a good thing. 
Okay, so now we want to dive into how to read your financial statements to spot errors or trouble spots. Uh, the most important thing that you want to do is make sure that your accounting and bookkeeping is correct. Okay, that is the absolute most important thing you want to do. Because if it's not, there's going to be a lot of errors and a lot of trouble spots. Okay, the next thing is when you look at a standalone profit and loss or balance sheet like this, okay, this is standalone, just one time period, it's not going to tell you a whole lot. All right, it'll tell you some things, but in general, it's not going to be very helpful. Again, you want to condense them, collapse them to make them easy to look at, and then you want to look at trending statements, and I'll show you an example of that to look for the following. You want to look for negative numbers, big changes, and then any of these items, revenue, expenses, assets, liabilities, and equity, are they increasing or decreasing, and are they going up a lot or a little? All right, so let me show you an example. So here I pull up a trending profit and loss statement for every month of 2020. And, and trending could be multiple years, multiple months, multiple quarters. It really doesn't matter. The important thing is, is to look at it because what you can do is you can start to compare the numbers month to month or year to year, quarter to quarter, to start to see changes. These changes will allow you to spot potential errors or trouble spots. What I mean by trouble spots are, you know, are certain expenses getting too high? And maybe they're legitimate, but they're just getting too high and you need to control those expenses. So what I've done in here is I have highlighted some examples of things that stick out as errors. So negative number, a negative reimbursement income. Your income should not be negative. Okay, so we would have to dig into that and see what's going on and fix it. Cost of goods sold should not be negative. Over here, cost of goods sold was relatively consistent, and then all of a sudden it shot up to $32,000. Okay, that looks like a problem. It could be a trouble spot, it could be just an error. Okay, hopefully it's an error. Down here, automobile expense is pretty consistent, but it jumps up in a couple of these months, and so we wanna take a look at that. There might be something wrong in there. Depreciation. Looks like it was all recorded at the end of the year. One big expense at the end of the year. We want to spread that out during the year. Insurance expense is negative. Maybe it was a refund. Maybe it was something else, but it's something we want to look at. And then utilities. These are pretty consistent, and then all of a sudden they jump pretty dramatically. So we want to take a look at that as well. All right, so let's take a look at a trending balance sheet. All right, same thing. We're looking at this at each every single month. And I'm gonna look at this and say, okay, accounts receivable is negative in May. Well, accounts receivable is what your customers owe you. So logically it shouldn't be negative. So we wanna take a look at that and see what's going on there. Other current assets went up from 19,000 to 38,000 at the end of the year. So we might wanna dig into that and just see what that increase was. And you know, maybe you know, who knows what it is, but it could be a problem in the business. And then accounts payable, we've got negative, negative 5,218. Again, this shouldn't be negative because it's money that you owe to your vendors. So you wanna look into this and find out what's going on. Okay, so that's how you wanna look at them. You wanna look at them on a trending basis, collapse them, and look for those problem areas. Okay, so now we wanna learn how to make some good business decisions with our financial statements. Again, I point out, if your accounting and bookkeeping is wrong, you risk making bad decisions. I've seen that happen many, many times because of bad input or something missing, whatever the case may be. Again, looking at a profit and loss and balance sheet alone is not very helpful. Uh, what we wanna do is we wanna use something called ratio analysis. This is just a fancy term for basic math, all right? So we're adding, subtracting, dividing, and multiplying to give us some insights into the, to the financial statements. We wanna look at these ratios over time and I wanna go through three simple ratios and how you can use them to make decisions. First one is gross profit margin, second one net profit margin, and then what's called accounts receivable collection days. All right, so your gross and net margin. This is directly from QuickBooks and you can set it up to show you what your gross margin is. Your gross margin is just a percentage, okay? And it's your gross profit, all right? And this is just your gross profit divided by your income, 57.84%. This means for every dollar you sell, you are keeping 57.84 cents. Is this good or bad? Well, 
This goes back to looking at trending ratios. So you want to calculate this over months, over years, to see what your gross margin is. And you can also compare this to people in your industry, all right? Many industry websites will have some of this information. So you can't look at it standalone and say, is this good or bad? You need to look at it over time to say, okay, is this consistent with the past? If it's been 75%, now it's 57.84%, something's not right. Now your net margin is basically the bottom line net as a percent of your total sales. Uh, this means for every dollar you sell, you keep or make 15.09 cents. And again, we don't know if this is good or bad. We need to look at history as well as industry peers. Okay, so you can, the way you can use this is you can calculate your gross and net margin. You can calculate for each line of business you have or even each product or service you have to determine which make the most and least profit. All right, so if you have something that's not making a whole lot of profit, this will guide your decision and maybe you change your prices. Uh, maybe it's your, your delivery is too expensive. You need to change some processes. Maybe you need to stop that line of business. I don't know. And if you have something that's very profitable, maybe that you focus in on that service or product and do more of that. Okay. Maybe you offer less discounts on the stuff that's not as profitable. Now, gross margin can also be used for a simple, what's called a break even analysis. So a lot of business owners will say, okay, I want to spend X amount of dollars, but I don't know if I can afford it. I don't know if this is going to be good or not. Is this a good decision? Well, a simple break even analysis says just divide that expense by your gross margin. And this is a very simplified way, but that will tell you how much in sales that you need to break even on that salary. So if you're going to pay somebody $50,000 a year and you say, can we hire this person? You're going to need 86,445 in sales to break even on their salary. So you need to decide, is this attainable or not? All right, accounts receivable collection days or how many days on average it takes you to collect money from customers. Uh, we're running up on 30 minutes, so I'm gonna be quick on this. But this is a great indicator. I'm not gonna go through, you don't need to memorize this. You can simply Google it and find it. But this is an indicator of how quickly your, your customers pay you, okay? And the goal of any business owner should be to get paid as quickly as possible because that increases cash flow. So on average, in this example, it takes 45.8 days to collect money. And again, is this good or bad? We don't know. You need to track this over time, all right? But knowing this, you can adjust your policies and make decisions to reduce this number over time and potentially increase your cash flow, okay? Now, a couple other ways that ratios can be helpful. There are so many ratios out there of things that you can calculate using your profit and loss and balance sheet. You can figure out how much of a return you're getting on your quote unquote investment in your business, how many days on average it takes you to sell inventory or pay your bills. It helps you determine if your prices are right, your product mix is right, how fast you can grow without having to take on more debt. Uh, if you have slow moving inventory, maybe you need to discount some of that. Maybe you need better vendor terms, uh, or you might need more strict qualifications for extending credit to new customers, okay? Many, many business decisions can be made with these ratios. All right, so quick summary here. With all of this, you don't need to be an expert or an accountant, you really don't. You just need to understand the basics of these financial statements, the layout, those basic formulas, and what they're telling you. Collapse them, look at them, look at them on a trending basis, and you're going to be able to see a lot. Use simple ratios to help you understand your business and guide you in making decisions. And also create what's called a dashboard. Okay, a dashboard is a summary of all these calculations, these ratios, and do it every month and practice and track it. And again, most important is your books have to be accurate for this to work. So if, if you do your own bookkeeping each month, which many business owners do, just simply ask your CPA or accountant to review the classifications and the reconciliations. This will just be, it's, it's relatively low cost and it's gonna just make sure that your books are right and so you can calculate these, these things correctly. Uh, they can also help with the dashboard, dashboard potentially. We do this with many, many clients. All right. All right, if you need to contact me, I know this was quick. I went over a lot. I am gonna be sending out a recording of this uh, in the next couple days, uh, but if you do need to contact me, uh, I've got all my contact information right here. Got my email address, my phone, the website, my LinkedIn profile, our Facebook page. 
You can contact me in any number of ways. I encourage you to ask any questions you have whatsoever. Uh, we are over by about two minutes, so I do apologize for that. I am gonna wrap this up. Thank you for attending today, and uh, I look forward to hearing from you soon.